Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for take after using the paranoid android from the last one week now it's time to taste the another custom rom called as pixel plus ui for the nothing phone one actually original pixel s friends has already been released but pixel plus ui is something different it's a rom which comes with the similar pixel phones without any changes in the user interface or the launcher but it has the addition of customizations hub that you get in other customizable roms ROM has all the major customizations along with the performance stability like Pixel experience that's why it's called as the Pixel Plus UI flashing of this ROM is same like we seen in the other custom ROM still you will see the first time flashing process here you need to download the full ROM zip file boot image file vendor underscore boot image and place them in a platform tools of the C drive or on the desktop of your PC Keep your phone bootloader unlocked and enable the USB debugging. Now boot your phone in a fast boot mode after powering off it and long pressing the volume down plus power button. Connect it to the PC and open the CMD window inside the folder where you place the downloaded files using shift key of keyboard plus right click of your mouse. Select the open PowerShell window from the drop down menu. Now in the CMD window type fast boot devices, then type fast boot flash boot and drag the boot image in the CMD and hit enter. Then type fast boot flash vendor underscore boot and drag the vendor boot image and hit enter. Now boot phone into the recovery using the volume keys and the power buttons of your phone. Keep phone connected to the PC. In the recovery tap Apple update from the ADB and then select ADB side load and drag the ROM zip file in a CMD and hit enter. Flashing of ROM starts in the CMD once gets 100% 2x for notification. Take phone in your hand and then tap factory set and select format data. Finally tap reboot to the system. Flashing is done here. Today in this video we will see what's new gates in this new pixel based ROM. What's working, new features, performance and stability of ROM in comparison with the other ROMs. Finally I discuss some major bugs so watch the video till the end. Now without further ado, let's get started. Everything is same in this ROM similar to the Pixel experience like its boot animation and whole setup process. It has some different stock wallpapers added like this one which you can check on the home screen. ROM has the stock latest Pixel launcher with all the goodies. Now let's jump to the about phone to check the details of the new Pixel Plus UI. In the stock setting we immediately see the difference between the original Pixel experience and this Pixel Plus UI experience ROM. Settings app has the new system icons and the greetings at the top of the setting. If you check the about phone section at the top who gets the device details, this is the Android 13 based official build with the same material you clock on historic. ROM comes with the latest security patches of January 2023. Kernel version is 5.4.210, builded with the latest Clang tool chain 14. Say Linux is enforcing. ROM is synchronized with the latest Android 13 beta QPS2 sources. Now let's quickly check out what's working, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hotspot, NFC, GPS, Bluetooth with the HD audio codex, auto brightness, these are all the important things are working without any issues. Now it's time to check the sensor, sensors like the light, proximity, magnetometer, gyroscope are working very good. But one sensor seems has issue that we will discuss in the bugs and the issue section of the video at the end. So stay tuned until the end of the video. Another important things like the light sensor, ear proximity, microphone, ear speakers, flashlight, multi-touch, display, etc. are working fine. Fingerprint and face unlock are working and they are enough fast and accurate. Hey Google off screen and on screen activation is also working very good. But swipe gesture activation has issue that we will discuss in the bug section. Google photos unlimited backup is working. Storage is encrypted so even if your device got stolen, no one can decrypt your device password. Most important part is the safety net is passing so you can run any security related applications on your device without any issues. Now it's time to check the camera application. ROM comes with the Nothing OS camera. It has working slow motion mode. Here is a sample. 
video recording is at 180p 60fps is working but 4k 60fps is not available live hdr video recording is working glyph flashlight is not working but normal flashlight is working well video stabilization is available and it's working but recording light on the back panel is not working wide angle camera modes for the photos and the video shootings both are working portrait mode photos for the front and the main camera are not working it's causing the force closing of the camera application other features like the time lapse panorama mode macro mode expert mode all are working fine to overcome the bug of portrait modes you can use the google gcam mgc build given under the video description it has the working portrait mode for the front and the back camera it will also give some additional features like the nightscape hdr plus mode etc glyph light signature feature of nothing phone one is partially working here like you gauge the brightness control slider for the glyph who gauge the charging meter indicator and the notification light both are working well Glyph light for the top right corner is only available for now. It will be fully working once we get the source code from the nothing. Now it's time to check the features of the ROM. As I already told in the intro, this is not a normal Pixel Experience ROM. It has lots of the customizations like other custom ROMs. We get the separate option called as the Pixelizer in the setting. Here all the customization features are well arranged in the vertical tabs. In the buttons option, we get the volume panel position changing toggle, which helps to show the volume panel on the left or the right corner of the screen. Volume panel will be expanded into the old Android 12-like panel here. We get the invert and the compact layout for the navigation bar. Under the gesture setting, we get the single tap to check the phone toggle, and it's working flawlessly. Under the miscellaneous setting, we get the advanced game space, advanced restart, power menu, Netflix pooping, etc. Most important part is the themes here. We get the lots of the custom themes like the pure black, vivid monet, paint in the snow, espresso. You can check them as on the screen. You can also change the color source of the ascents like you can choose the wallpaper from the lost screen wallpaper or from the home screen separately. You can manually change the ascent color along with its luminance and the chroma factor using the slider setting. In the quick setting, you get the options like the increasing or reducing the haptic feedbacks of the brightness slider in the quick setting panel. Another unique feature toggle available here is called as the switch to fluid QS style. It will give the slight rectangular look to the QS panel tiles along with the smooth scrolling as compared to the default rounded tiles. There is a background transparency slider available here which gives the transparent glassy look to the QS panel. All other old custom features are available here like the status bar customizations, so we will not discuss them here again. Other different customizations are available in the display and the system setting like display color modes, double tap to wake and sleep, one handed mode, etc. As this is the official build, we get the OT updater in the system setting and it's working. We also get the manual option to flash the OTA. So, we discussed all the major customizations. Now, it's time for the testing performance. As usual, this is the Pixel Experience based ROM, who gets the amazing performance. It's fast and fluid. All the applications are running on the 120Hz, except some applications like the camera. Here, screen refresh rate goes down to the 60Hz. When I ran the Geekbench test, I got the score of 805 and 2769 for the single core and multi core respectively. If you compare these results with the paranoid Android in the last video, there we got the result of 824 and 3015, while for the nameless OS, we got the results of 794 and 2800. So, Pixel Plus U is still lagging behind other AOSP ROMs, but it has nearly same results like other customizable ROMs like Ryzdroid and Evolution X. When I ran the Hulkan Graphics API test, I got a score of 2892. Surprisingly, Hulkan Graphics API results are highest result till the data I got here as compared to the any other ROM. Overall, this ROM is very good in terms of the performance and it will not disappoint you in any way. Next, I did the system stability test using the CPU throttling on 20 threads for the 6 minute and I got the score of 91% which is very good score. Still results are nearly same like other ROMs that we tested previously. Now it's time to show you some bugs and the issues. ROM comes with the wide band security as L3 so we can't able to stream the Netflix and the Amazon Prime at the full HD resolution. Actually this issue is persisting in all the other custom ROMs. Next issue I found is the swipe gesture to access the Google Assistant. 
When you swipe the corner to access the Google Assistant, sometimes it's causing the system you a crash. But voice activation of Google Assistant is working fine. In the system gesture setting, you can use the volume button, playback control to skip the music tracks, but it's not working at all. Another major issue that I'm facing from the last panel of Android ROM is the no HOLD calling working. I can't able to make or receive the HOLD calls on the Airtel SIMs, but some users reported that the Jio SIMs are working well with the HOLD. But if your SIM supports the normal calls, it will automatically switch between 4G calling, and that works fine. Another bug that I told you while testing the sensor is the compass seems not working properly. Here it's not showing the correct directions for me, so it seems buggy. Another issue is no wireless charging is working in the ROM. Except the issue I did not found any deal breaking issue in the ROM. It's pretty stable. Instead of Pixel Experience or the Plus Edition, I recommend you to use this version because it's giving all the goodies of the Pixel Experience with the addition of most advanced customization that other ROMs offering. with the great stability and the performance so that's it for today guys if you think this video help you then please do like share and subscribe press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content thanks for watching see you next time take care bye bye